Good evening, everybody. This is Darius Sesemi, founder of GV Wire uh, uh, and uh, president of Granville Homes. Uh, welcome to another episode of Unfiltered, along with my co-host, council member Mike Rabasi. Good evening. Good evening, Mike. Uh, Steve Branda has a night off tonight. He's on special assignment someplace, which he'll uh, fill us uh, back in uh, next Tuesday. Uh, before we get started, we want to do our brief news minute uh, by Veronique. So let's fire that up. Coming to you from the GVWire studio, here are some of the trending stories that are making a local impact. Beginning October 3rd, Bullard High School students will be required to place all cell phones in locked pouches. The policy is going forward despite negative feedback from parents and students. While visiting Clovis, minority leader Kevin McCarthy said the economy is the top issue that will win back the House for Republicans. Council members Gary Bredefeld and Mike Carbasi blocked an extension for a downtown housing project that failed to break ground after many years of delays. And we highlight food carrying robots that the maker says will increase tips for servers. Join the conversation on those stories and more now on Facebook and GVWire.com. Okay, thank you, Veronique. Um, so, uh, on, on our panel, to, uh, on our list of items to go over with you this evening, uh, we're going to discuss. Uh, we're going to start with Bullard High School's uh, cell phone ban. But before we do that, actually, we have a uh, poll that GVWire did uh, last week on the uh, student loan forgiveness. Mike, you want to talk to us about that as we put that on the screen? Sure. So uh, the question was asked uh, from our viewers, is Biden's student loan forgiveness fair to those who didn't go to college? And the results were, uh, let's see, pretty pretty much, you know, 32, only 32.6% were yes. I'm an absolutely, and I'll tell you why in a minute, why I'm in the minority. Uh, you know what? That's the wrong poll. That, that is a wrong poll. That, that's the that's right. <laughs> the poll results we have, though, it's close. Thirty-seven and a half thought it was fair. Uh, Sixty-two and a half percent said no. Hold it's on. Not... Let, let, let's put. Let's take this off the screen. Uh, okay. okay. There you go. Thank it's you. It's a very okay. contentious issue. This happens. <laughs> I think we got ahead of ourselves. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see if we can put the right poll on the screen. That's our uh, slide number two. Uh, Biden student loan forgiveness. And Mike, uh, why don't you go over some of the results yeah. while we're waiting for the... Uh... Sure. So what you're going to see is it was uh, you know, overwhelmingly a no. 62.5% of folks thought it was not fair. It's not fair. 37.5% said yes. Now, I did not actually benefit from student loans, but when I went to college, it didn't cost an arm and a leg. You could still work and pay your way through college. And that's not the way it is now. And the reason why I think it's fair, the interest, a lot of these, it's not even the principal, it's the interest that a lot of these workers today are being killed by, whether you're a physician whether you're in the STEM, you're an engineer, or whether you're a teacher, and you are paying so much of your income instead of spending in our current economy today, you're having to deal with uh, spending it because of a previous uh, obligation. Now, we provide incentives to farmers. We give them money uh, you know, all the time to the federal government. We give, we give people on the lower end of the economic scale money all the time. So why not do that for our students that are now in a higher tax bracket so they could spend the money they're earning today on this economy rather than having to bail out the last economy? But Mike, That's uh, my spin. Okay, uh, Mike, how about, uh, I mean, uh, what about all those folks that didn't go to college that now their taxes have to go and pay for uh, these students that uh, want, want their, well, are gonna have their loans for, for given. By the way, uh, college is a, a education, as we both have talked about, is a, is a fantastic tool to right. change the world in, in, a, in a better way. But what about all the Americans that didn't get to go to college? Their taxes are now going to pay for, for folks that went to college and now they're going to have their loans forgiven. I can also think of the GIs. I can think of uh, the veterans. Should we spend money on health care for our veterans that have, you know, given up you know, so much of their time and resources and, and, and their limbs uh, to defend our country. Yeah, so we have the GI Bill, which provides incentives not only to the, to the current, uh, <clears throat> our current sailors and soldiers, but also to their families so that they can go to school and have a reduction or in some cases no tuition. But the whole point is that this, these people that go to college, traditionally they move higher up in the tax bracket. So they'll be paying taxes too to help these folks like our GIs. Right. It's right. all relative. Okay. We have our poll. Good. Let's put the poll up yeah. now. I think we have that. 
Yeah, this has been a heck of a week for me to be the, in the minority on some issues. Here's another right, one. Right. <laughs> okay. Here yeah. and here is our poll. You want to just read that one more time, Paul? Yeah. I mean, Mike. Yeah. Is Biden's <laughs> student loan forgiveness fair to those who didn't go to college? Thirty-seven point five percent yes, sixty-two point five percent no. And let's also add this is an election year. There was a lot of pressure. The, one of the president's promises was he would do something about this. But I can assure you, twenty thousand dollars is helpful, but it's not going to solve the general problem. But it is a step in the right direction for so many that are, uh, you know, are unfortunately uh, left behind because of these massive student loans. Okay, let's uh, <clears throat> move on to our. Uh, there's no other, no quash, quash, questions or comments except Robert, Robert Wharton. Tired of this crap, government and student stupid policies. Uh, I'm trying to think that that's basically the only. Okay, Jake Whaley uh, Watts. If anyone is traveling, avoid. Okay, avoid Shaw and Willow due to a light out. We're gonna have lots of brownouts. Uh, looks like tonight. Right. And uh, maybe for the next couple yeah, of days. Yeah, we even had some schools, you know, Star Elementary and District 2. Uh, they, their ACs hadn't been serviced uh, well enough, and they had to shut down, and kids went home early. So, Jeff Whitaker had a question. Is it go it, it's going to cause more inflation by basically uh, giving money away uh, to students. Any thoughts on yeah, that? No, great point, and I worry about that as well. Um, but what I'm really concerned <clears throat> about is, see, it's not the principle. It, I, I wish the government would do more about reining in the interest because... What they, they took away was your ability to declare bankruptcy. I don't like anyone declaring bankruptcy, but it was a tool you had to renegotiate better rates with creditors. You can't do that for student loans. And they charge these, I mean, in most cases, the interest is more than the principal. Now, you do decide, you do make a decision to go and take that risk, and I understand that. Unfortunately, these are younger people that are desperate for a uh, higher pay and a higher education, and they make bad decisions. Right. Some of them spend the money in ways they shouldn't, but the majority of them are trying to get into the higher tax bracket and pay more into the system. So this will provide a little bit of a relief. So I think what would help is, I mean, perhaps it creates inflation because now we have more people spending money in our economy as opposed to spending it to a right. financing agency. Let me, I'm gonna jump to this. Uh, we, have, we have another video on restaurant robots at Fresno uh, Expo. Is this gonna be the future of food service? Let's play that video up next. Survey is actually an autonomous food delivery system, so it can be food delivery, autonomous busing, hosting, kind of various roles throughout the restaurant, but primarily we see serving and food running and food busing the most. We pre-map a location, so we'll come in, we have a field operator like myself, or we have a team come in, they'll set up the location, coordinate where each table point is, kind of work with the restaurant owner, get the best flow integrated so it's personalized at each location, and then we'll have it set up. So if we're doing food running, we'll actually have it go straight to the expediter location, expediter can load the food, and they'll send it to the exact table point, and then usually a server will meet it, or in some fast casual settings, actually be self-service where the guests will serve it themselves. It does the heavy lifting, or the other way around. So instead of having a busser come out and carry all that heavy stuff that the robot can meet them at the table they can load it up it'll go straight to the dish pit so they're not having to carry that 50 pound tub around with them happy birthday survey is kind of there to help those servers so if you're short staff somebody's calling out maybe that server can go from covering five tops on the night to six or seven you can split up make that section a little larger so for the server it actually helps increase their tips because they're able to spend more face-to-face -face time instead of having to run back get your food get that stuff they're actually on the floor interacting with the customer and can help get the food we're currently in a lot of restaurants we're in a few different countries J japan korea the u.s and we have about 8,000 robots deployed currently Okay, Mike, you have uh, experience in the restaurant uh, business. In fact, you, you ran and owned your own restaurant. Can I briefly tell us what you think about uh, robots for the future of restaurants? Well, maybe a flex day isn't the best time, time to say this, but the advantage of a robot is it can't say, you know, I'm calling in sick. And I think for a lot of restaurateurs, that's going to be really attractive. I, as a consumer and as a restaurateur, probably wouldn't want to embrace robots. I still feel the value, especially when you're a smaller restaurant of that interaction with a client, with a customer, that can build a lot of goodwill. And I don't think a robot can do the same. But maybe if you're a Red Robin or a place with a lot of high volume and just rapid traffic, that might actually work. I mean, I'm curious to see how consumers are gonna embrace it, but I still believe in the ability for people. And I worry about robotics and how it's gonna affect our economy. Uh, another comment is just another way uh, the increase of the minimum wage is causing robots to take over human jobs just to save money. Hey, as uh, costs go up for businesses, they have to look at 
ways to uh, right. you know cut costs without you know uh, adding you know more revenue uh, no, no, more cost it, of the cut. No, it's true. So they phased uh, when I had my restaurant. They started phasing the increases of minimum wage to fifteen dollars. And you know it's difficult to sell a sandwich, for example, at an affordable price. Look how much costs have gone up. I mean, forget the economy, just in general, because of rising minimum wage. And the situation we have in Fresno in the Central Valley is very different than San Francisco. The cost of living is so high over there. But that's the problem with California. Uh, you can be a legislator from one of these higher population areas and say, we're going to do this, and then you do it, and it can devastate economies like in places like Fresno where we don't make as much right. as the average earner. Okay, we're going to move on to our next topic. Just a couple of other topics for you. Cell phone ban start date now set for Bullard High School. That looks like it's uh, October 3rd. Did you go to Bullard? I, I went there for a year, but I left because I heard they were going to ban cell phones. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to uh, start. Uh, there may have been some parent engagement, uh, but it's unknown how much parent and teacher engagement there was. But they announced this uh, the date, October 3rd, last week. Uh, that's uh, Principal uh, Armand Turrigan, uh, who we have invited to the show previously, but he was not available to join us. So that is uh, rolling out. Uh, any have you heard anything from parents in your district? Well, you know, I, th I think our poll, which we'll probably put up in a second, is pretty indicative of where, how people feel. And I can tell you, in Northwest Fresno, people want to be included in decisions that are made about them. I mean, yes, we have a lot of trust in our leaders, but we still, uh, you know, we I uh, we're operate at the consent of the constituents, and Bullard is no exception of that. And what's surprising to me is. You know, I'm called the council member, but when you represent Bullard, you're called the trustee. And I think the trust has been so eroded from that position. And I'll make no mistake, no, no secret of it. I'm supporting a, a challenger for that position. I think it's the kind of person that understands that you have to have the consent of parents. That's a good thing about elections because this is a big plan. It probably will be, end up being a good thing for the students, but there's no reason why they couldn't have worked with the parents and made it an even better plan. I can't tell you how many ideas I've had, but I've gone to residents, we've had community meetings, and they make it better and make yeah. it easier for me to actually get this past the city hall. Exactly. A uh, couple of comments uh, on the last item. <clears throat> Robert Wharton said maybe fast food workers shouldn't work and wait for a bailout. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let's move on to uh, McCarthy. His com uh, he, he made a statement last week when he was in Fresno. Uh, our own David Taub covered him, and he said, basically, it's about the economy, not abortion, which is the most important election issue. In other words, we, we, had a, we, had a, we had a red wave going to take over the House by Republicans and potentially the Senate, and it looks like the red wave is becoming a red ripple. Uh, that margin is eroding, uh, although, you know, it's, uh, what is it, eight weeks till election or four weeks till the ballots get dropped off, at least in California. And uh, lot, lots can happen between now and then. Uh, gas prices are down uh, since Ju the peak in when was it May or June. So uh, people are feeling a little bit better. Consumer confidence numbers are finally uh, looks like they bottomed out and are, are on the way back up. Probably has got a lot to do with uh, what happens at the gas pump. That's a tax that you pay every week when you when you go to sure. the gas pump. But what are your thoughts that it's the economy, not abortion? That is the most important election issue. Yeah, well, I'm curious what our viewers think. Look, I have a lot of friends that are pro-life. I have a lot of friends that are pro-choice. But when you look at the national polling and you look at what happened even in Kansas, where Kansas decided not to actually put in their constitution a, a ban against abortion, it's, it's interesting because for, for those that argue, argue against big government, you're actually allowing government to make a very personal decision for a family. Uh, and I, I really don't know if that's the proper role of government. Look, I've got good friends that they truly believe they're saving lives, and I can respect that. But in the end, I think this comes down to the <clears throat> private decision a family makes. And most of these abortions, I'm not, a, I'm not personally a fan of abortion, but I mean, if I had to make that decision with my partner, I, we've talked about this extensively. It's not something that we could do, but we appreciate having that option. But a majority of those abortions happen within the first trimester, like 95 or 90, 98% of them. Um, and I understand uh, a lot of people not wanting them to be along beyond that, 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 that time frame. But the reality is when you see government doing this and it looks obtrusive, you've got a lot of independent voters that will be offended by that and wonder what, what's coming next. What are they going to do next? And uh, 
I, I think yeah. anyone who says this isn't going to be a be a factor in the midterm elections, it's that's a totally naive statement. This is absolutely going to be a factor in the next election. Well, we know that the the uh, the Republicans had a big tailwind, and that is kind of dissipating. So we'll, we'll see the the numbers that I had seen was uh, Republicans in the House plus thirty. And now it looks like it may be plus eight to ten, and pro potentially as low as seven. They only need four. I believe the number is four to take to become the right. bare bones majority. There's another factor though. There's the Trump factor, Darius. Um, yes. You know, I remember when we had those two vacant uh, elections for Senate in Georgia, and Mitch McConnell started going to battle with Trump, saying, you know, don't get involved, and he did, and both those candidates lost, and then two Democrats won Georgia, which I thought I didn't think that was going to happen, and it did. So, I mean, the, the president, former president, has a lot of uh, purchasing power still with the electorate. Right. But when, he, when you interfere and you get a candidate that wins an election, they win the primary, but they can't win a general. Well, that, that takes away any hope the Republicans have ever taken over. And I think that's going to come into play as well. Okay. Before we go to our <clears throat> last item, which is a, a downtown project that, that council kills, you were part of that, uh, we want to put the poll back on. And I, I, I skipped it. The cell phone poll that we uh, that uh, GBR did on it's, again, it's a, it's a um, uh, Facebook poll uh, on whether um, where is that on here? Oh, about the cell, the, the, the cell, cell phone. Yeah. Yes. How this, how how are how are how the people feel about a cell phone man in Bullard? And, yeah, that's um, the one that we had up, up yep. first. Let's see if uh, we can pull that up. It looks like the majority of folks wanted uh, Involve parent involvement. Parent involvement, and it, I don't think it's on it's on this layout. But uh, we're going to get that up. That uh, if you can get if our Johnny can get yep, that up um, while he's doing that, uh, Mike. Uh, the last item we're going to discuss is the um, council project. Yeah. So uh, this. But let me see if you have that poll. We don't have it. Give us a minute. Okay. But, uh, Poll disappeared. We'll come back to that after we talk about the, the okay. council. How about okay, that? Good. So, yeah. So you know, uh, the I'm glad we're talking about it here on GV Wire because some media outlets only give the last six months of the story. Um, council didn't kill this project. I mean, look, the developer had years and years, at least eight years, if not more, on this project and ten million dollars of taxpayer money to build these units and couldn't get it done. And last year, I voted no. And this year, I voted no again. But what changed is Councilmember Arias uh, in, in, in introduced a policy in response to another project that we were not going to be extending things anymore unless it was an extreme circumstance. And I did not find an extreme circumstance. It was just more of the same. Uh, the developers have come before the council before I was on the council and said, we will never ask for another extension. We're never going to ask for more money. And they kept doing that. And frankly, uh, I know they're upset, and, and look, we're human beings. We say things that make us upset. I think Mr. Noyan probably is pretty ashamed of himself because with all that public support, he couldn't get the project done. And um, I'm not, look, my job is to do what's right for taxpayers. Paying $10 million of taxpayer money for only 20 units of subsidized housing for the afford for affordable housing. If politicians are telling you that's going to solve our housing crisis, they're full of crap. That's completely dishonest because we need a lot more than 20 units of housing uh, or 100 units of housing for the whole overall project to actually solve this problem. But I get it. It's easy as a politician to look the other way and say, well, I'm not going to touch this. But that's not what I got elected to do. And, and there's also some local measure C money, uh, the TO transit oriented design mm -hmm. money that was allocated several hundred thousand dollars. So if this project doesn't go through, which the project right. is not going through at this point, those monies can be reallocated to other transit-oriented design right. projects. Is that correct? It's our money. It's okay. taxpayer money. It's going to go somewhere else. Probably a way to actually help people in a way that's more cost-effective for taxpayers. But let me put it this way. We would be paying about half a million dollars per unit of affordable housing. So taxpayers paying half a million dollars. When you look at everything happening in our economy today, does that seem fair? that somebody who maybe doesn't have the income, that we're subsidizing them at half a million dollars a unit and we're giving that money to a private developer? Let me put it this way. We could pay their rent for life and it would still cost less than half a million dollars a person. That's a lot of money. It is. Uh, let's see if we have that poll back up. Uh, yeah. uh, looks like we don't. The poll was up earlier. So 
uh, the numbers, if I remember correctly, over 60% said that uh, we, if there is a cell phone ban, uh, either they want a cell phone ban or they want a cell phone ban with parents' yeah, feedback. Well we're about 32 and a half percent said yes. Others either said no or a majority like 37% said, yeah, but I want to be included. I want to be able to have a right to say how that works. Yeah. And there's lots um, of options. I mean, would it be in a pouch? Would it would, like they have this pouch system now, which they're paying right. tens of thousands of dollars for, or would it be a different system? A couple of questions on our Facebook live. It says, uh, it takes forever to get projects done at city of Fresno. Is that why this project was delayed or was that, was that a, no, of, no. The, now, according to the developer, uh, and take this with a grain of salt, the last delays were because of the flood control district. That's a separate entity from the city. Now, it is absolutely true. If you don't get government subsidies, like $10 million, and you put your own money into a project, it still takes a long time to get things through, the, through, the, through City Hall. Part of it is problems we have in the building versus Clovis or Visalia or Madera. The other issue is the council itself being very selective and... Uh, not objective about things being, you know, unfortunately, uh, some of the political shenanigans that happen at City Hall. We, we, you know, not me, but some of the council members have stopped projects for all kinds of reasons, not because of delays or costs of the taxpayer. So, all on TV. so yeah, they're, they're, look, that's just my opinion. I'm, I'm one of seven, but um, the city has a lot of work to do. Look at the number of permits we've issued for new housing in this community versus what we need to do as a state to build all those millions of units the government uh, said we're way right. behind. And that hasn't changed under the last couple of years under the new administration. Got it. I think we're going to end with the poll. It looks like we have the poll back There on. we go. All right. There we go. Uh, can we put it on the screen? Yeah, we've got it on the TV. Screen. Perfect. Uh-oh. Is it on? Oh, yeah. There we go. Right we got it on the TV right behind us. Okay. So let's take a look at the poll. Uh, do you support local high school banning students' cell phone use? 32% yes. Absolutely, uh, almost 40%. Yes, but with parent involvement. So it looks like the majority of folks want that, but they want uh, also parent involvement. Okay, uh, no other comments on, um, oh, there's one other comment on um, about the city, about city of Fresno, but Tanu spam. Because of constant turnover in the planning department and stupid comments and requirements that sometimes can kill a project. Yep. My daughter is in the architecture field and tells of the stupid things happening in the planning department. There's a project that has been in the city for over four months and no movement. Oh, that's nothing. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be facetious about okay. that. But uh, no, no, you're, you're right. Look, we have a lot of work to do in this area. And I can tell you that myself and another council member, you're going to see some movement in that area where, because we're okay. going to demand results. Okay. That wraps up uh, this uh, episode of Unfiltered. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have a very lively show for you a week from tonight. Uh, we'll start uh, releasing some information about what it's going to be covering. Uh, great story about Fresno County, Central California, and our quality of life. So stay tuned. Uh, we hope to see you all next Tuesday.